Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna share with you five Figma plugins that I'm using every single day. And one of the main things I've been using Figma for is really to replace pretty much all of the Adobe suite. So obviously we're using Figma on the web design side of things, the UI, the UX kind of capabilities, but we're also using Figma more and more to replace apps like Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and a few other kind of niche Adobe products. And for me, one of the biggest things that has unlocked this ability is the plugins that Figma has because the community is building so many plugins that really power up the base capabilities of Figma. So before I jump into actually showing you the five different plugins, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to actually install a plugin if you don't already know. So first of all, you need to go into Figma, you go over to explore and the community. From here, you can type in the name of a plugin. You can also look around and kind of look for inspiration. Side note, I also use the kind of Figma community and this is something I used a lot when I was really starting out to really learn design. Like like it's a very good tool to learn design, see what people are doing, kind of see how they're creating different effects, but that's a, a different story. Inside of here, you can see other trending Figma plugins. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on one of these. Once you're on this page, you can actually see all about this plugin, what the plugin does, the different previews and everything. You can like the plugin. You can open this plugin in a specific file. But personally, what I prefer to do is to save this because then it is in your saved plugins. And adding these plugins to Figma is really as simple as this. You can add a bunch of different plugins in here. The only problem is when you add loads of plugins is it does become a bit of a nightmare to figure out which one's which when you're actually trying to trying to find one really quickly. Um, but inside of here, you can see all the different details about it. You can see what people say about this. One thing to note is some of these do have in-app purchases, which sometimes means that you can't really use them unless you actually pay for them. So most of the free ones are really good. The only problem with Figma plugins is that typically a free plugin that does well becomes a paid plugin. All the plugins I'm going to share with you today are free, so there's no in-app purchases and hopefully, fingers crossed, they don't add them in future. So let's jump into the very first plugin and that is Vectorize Bitmap. Now this is a plugin that I use all the time because often we'll get images from clients and those images will be JPEGs or PNGs and we want them as SVGs or at least the ability to create a transparent background. So what Vectorize Bitmap does is it traces the image, specifically a JPEG in this example, and what we can do is we can turn this into a vector graphic. So obviously a vector graphic is infinitely scalable but it also gives you the ability to change the color of that graphic. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go over to my saved plugins. Inside of here, I can go down to vectorize bitmap. And then what's gonna happen is gonna open this up. Now, sometimes I get an issue inside of here where it says like it's, it's got an error, but most of the time when I click okay, it just actually adds the vectorized bitmap to the page. So now you can see inside of here, if I double click into my group, I actually have some different vectors. Now I can remove this background layer and now I have these clean vectors where I can go in here, change the colors and I can export this as an SVG. As you can see, this is incredibly useful specifically for logos. All the time we'll get logos from companies and they may want to change them to their brand colors or just make it fit in with the design a little bit better. So what I'll do is I'll use Vectorize Bitmap all the time to change these into SVGs because typically, especially if it's an old company, it will be provided as a PNG or some really low resolution image. And what you can do with this is once you've turned it into a bitmap, you can then scale it infinitely. Now the second plugin that I want to share with you is Content Real. Now this one saves so much time, especially when working on client projects. Now, Content Reel basically just gives you a bunch of different content that you can put into your designs. So what you're able to do here is actually fill in your designs so they don't look completely kind of template designs and they actually can see some real world examples of what it would look like if users put their information on the page or if you had the final assets for a web design project. This is especially useful because often getting content from the client is actually one of the hardest things to do. So as you can see inside of here, we've got a couple different modals. If I click into this name and I run the plugin. I'm going to go over to content reel. And inside of here, I have a bunch of different options. So you have text options, images, icons, and then you can also add your own pieces of content inside of here. And then you can reference those in future. So if I go inside of here and I go to full name, I can go and select any of these dummy full names to just apply inside of here. And then I can do this with a bunch of other content. So for example, if I want to change out the image inside of here, I can do the exact same thing. So I just go over to content reel again. Inside of here, I find the image. I go to avatars and we've got a bunch of different avatars. We've got logos, all that kind of stuff inside of here. Let's say I want an avatar female. I can click on any of these or I can just apply random. 
Inside of here, you can see where I've just got a bunch of different images I can swap between. This then saves the step where you have to go over to Unsplash or some other place to get this content, and you can just drop it straight into your designs. And you can also apply this to multiple places at once. Now, as you can see, this is a huge time saver because you come in here, you have all this content just ready to fill in, and you don't have to go source these images. You don't have to go make up random names that you end up always making up the same name over and over again. You don't have to make up emails and all this information to go inside of here, but you can also start building your own library in here of different things that you can use over and over again throughout your projects. Now this third plugin is probably my most used plugin of all and that is a plugin called Noise and Texture. Now this plugin lets you add noise and texture to different images, to different designs and it also has some different motion capabilities. So if I come into this design here and I click on the image itself because I want to add noise and texture to this image. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to click on this. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go over to noise and texture. So let's go find that in here. Then I have a bunch of different abilities to add different patterns, different textures, different animated sequences to this specific frame. So inside of here, what I can do, let's just zoom in on the image so we can see this a little bit better. I can change the size of these. Let's actually just turn up the amount and let's also turn up the opacity to make it nice and easy to see. I can turn up the size of the texture we're gonna add. I can change the amount of texture we're gonna add to the page. And as you can see, when I start to add this really small, we're gonna add a small amount of texture inside of here. I can change up what shape these are as well. So you have loads of ability to customize this. You can also change different patterns inside of here. You can change the opacity. But one thing I just like to use often is just add a little bit of texture to an image or to a design, which just kind of gives us a sense of it being a real world object. So for example, let's just add a little bit of texture inside of here. So we want a bunch of texture. We want it super, super small. So we can add a, basically a grain to this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna add this as jet black. Now you can change the opacity in here, but one thing I actually like to do is just add this. And then what it does is it goes into here and adds this as a layer. You can come into this layer and then just reduce the opacity inside this layer, which gives you really good granular control over how much you want this to appear. Now, another really useful thing they've added into this tool is the ability to add animations. So if you jump back into the tool, you can see inside of here, there's these different animations that you can set and you can change the colors that are gonna appear inside of these animations. We can add these to the different frames and then you can change the speed that it's gonna move at, the details. And this is just a really nice touch that you can add to your designs. You can add these little extra pieces inside of here. And you can also do a few other things like save presets inside of this app for different patterns and different things that you want to add over time. Now this fourth plugin is gonna save you so much time and it pretty much does what it says on the box and that is auto documentation. Pretty much you run this once you've done your designs, once you've added the styles into Figma and it will document what you have saved to the file. This is especially useful when you're exporting this to a developer. For example, what we do is a web designer will work on the design. They'll make sure that the styles are saved inside of Figma. They'll then hit auto documentation. It will document everything. The developer can then reference that documentation so they can see that when they're adding it into Webflow. Here's the different colors we're using. Here's the different sizes of text we're using. Here's the kerning, all of that information. So all we need to do is go back over to our plugins. We're gonna run a plugin and that is gonna be the auto documentation plugin. From here, you have two options. You can run colors or fonts. Now, when you run this, it always, for some reason, adds it to the very center of your frame. So sometimes it feels like it hasn't actually run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this and then we'll go searching for it. So as you can see, there's actually some movement in this corner. That is it auto generating the colors. If I just zoom out now, you'll be able to see somewhere over here, we've just listed all of the colors that we have saved to this file. So you can see we have our grays, we have the Keppel color, and we have the red. So what it has done is it's documented all of those colors that we had saved inside of here, which now just gives you something really nice to reference in future. And it just gives you this visual element to be able to see the colors. Now let's do the exact same thing with the typography. So if I just come in here and document all the fonts, you can see it started generating this list and it has all of our different text styles inside of here. So if I just move this out of the way, you can see we have our heading one font, we have our heading two, heading three, and then the text size large along here. And it's documented all of the different details about that specific font. Now this is one that I use all the time just to speed up the documentation process. And it just makes it really nice because you don't have to go through and just kind of 
go into those finicky details to grab all of those styles. Now this fifth plugin is one that I'm pretty much using on every single project and that is Tailwind CSS Color Generator. Now Tailwind is a CSS framework, but there's a bunch of different tools built around Tailwind that are incredibly useful for anyone designing. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to be designing with Tailwind CSS. Now when we jump in here, we have a bunch of different options. So as you can see, what we have is a specific color and then a bunch of different shades for that color. So when you're designing, it's very nice to have your primary color and then different shades of that primary color. So for example, if you want a really light background in that shade, if you want something a little bit darker, maybe to use for text, then you can add that inside of here. Now what this does is it generates a bunch of different steps, but you can come in here and change what your primary color is. So for example, let's say I want this kind of green color. I can change the saturation of this. So you can see I'm making it more desaturated and we have a full palette that's matching that saturation level. And then I can also change the lightness. And as you can see, as I change this, this little dot changes. Now it basically means that's the primary one that we're focused on inside this set of different shades. Now the reason I personally really like this is it's a really quick way to generate a bunch of different shades that work with one specific color that you like. So for example, let's say I found a color that I really liked. Let's say it was, I don't know, let's go over to this one here. So this is the color that I really liked. What I could do is I could come in here I would paste it into the hex code and then it would generate these different steps and I could just pull them straight into my Figma files. So if I click on create these styles, what's gonna happen is the, all of these styles are gonna be added inside of the color style panel. So now we've really quickly generated a color with a bunch of different steps that we can play around with, we can change, we can adjust these a little bit, but rather than having to go from scratch and try to do all of this, what we can do is we can put it in here and then we can adjust it as we work and we can kind of manipulate these things that we've already put onto the page. I personally find this a much quicker way to work than going through and having to add every single shade inside of here and then like tweak it and perfect it. Sure, you're gonna jump into it, but ultimately it's quicker if you have all of these inside of there and then all you're doing is tweaking them. All right, so that's five Figma plugins that I'm personally using pretty much every single day. And when I was outlining this video, I realized there's actually way more than five plugins that I'm using very often. So if you want another video like this, then let me know in the comments. And I'd also really like to know if there's any useful plugins that you're using pretty much every single day. And as a bonus tip, if they mean I can cancel my Adobe subscription and just use Figma. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.